This is a walkthrough slash guide slash tutorial of a complete assembly of an iPod Classic 5th generation or an iPod video. The tutorial is the same for the 5.5, but today specifically, we're going to be doing a 5th generation per this nice customer's order. So thank you for the order and here's a nice video of your iPod. Interesting choice, by the way, on the colors. I do like it. First of all, you're going to need a PH00 Phillips head screwdriver, possibly a spudger. Really, it's just the screwdriver. Obviously, you will need all of these parts, the motherboard, the midframe, etc. All of which and more are available on my store, eoe.works or eliteobsolete.com. But most importantly, you must not forget your screws. I do sell a screw set for quite cheap, so check it out. Timestamps for each step are in the description below. The first thing we start off with is the motherboard. As you can see, it's an 820-1763-A non-enhanced fifth generation iPod video motherboard. So I click wheel, peel that off, center button. Go ahead and place it in there like that. You should get a piece of tape. I use captain's tape. You can use scotch tape, really any kind of tape and place it over the center select button. So installation is easy and you're not fobbling around. Go ahead and place it in there. Put that latch down. That is perfect. Now we're going to take our ZIF Flex. Bend it a little bit. It goes in with these white lines up. That is upside down. You're going to want to take the flex itself, use it to flip up that latch there, and pop it in. Boom. You should only be able to see that first white line. You're going to need a fifth generation midframe, this way facing up with a little indent, the cutout for the port. Line up this with this. I like to take my finger with a hard drive flex and be sure to guide that hard drive flex through the midframe. Perfect. Take your faceplate, clear faceplate, awesome. Here's a brand new LCD. Line up the two holes in the LCD with the two holes on the faceplate, awesome. Next step, use one hand and one finger to hold up that LCD flex. Guide the click wheel. Place the faceplate. Make sure the screw holes are lining up with the midframe. As you can see here, if I press it, it won't go in. Take a little piece of the midframe with your finger and sort of push it outside the LCD. It's lining up again. Awesome. Take the LCD flex, lift up a latch. The LCD cable in, it's in all the way. Push the latch down. Awesome, there you go. We're going to take the battery, insert it. Apple logo, make sure the LCD doesn't have any lines. Next up is our iFlash Solo micro SD card. Ensure the lock switch is not in the locked position. It should look like such. Insert it. Lift up the latch. Now it's time to restore the iPod. Plug it in. While that's restoring, I like to install the headphone jack flex, dock bezel, and the back plate. Start with the headphone jack. first screw you always want to start with at the top of the lock hold switch right there. Now ideally you would want to be doing this on a flat surface. I'm doing it while I'm holding it for demonstration purposes. The headphone jack flex is in. Bend this cable for easy insertion. Make sure the lock hold switch is up enough to be switched. Perfect. Now onto the dock bezel. Back plate is complete. The iPod has finished restoring and I've loaded some music on there. Test the buttons and the scroll. It scrolls really nicely. Awesome, all the buttons work perfectly. To insert the back plate or headphone jack, get a hold of the flex flip up that motherboard ZIF connector. Latch it back down, awesome. Lock hold switch. Finally, the headphone jack. You always do want to wiggle it a little bit just to make sure. This thing just tested perfectly. What we're going to do are the final steps of assembling this iPod. When you screw in the faceplate to the midframe during final assembly, you're going to want to use the method where you screw here, here, and here as to distribute pressure evenly. Cool. Now that the front is done, I'm going to focus on the iFlash. iFlash's official tutorial recommends that you use foam pads as such, which is stupid. They don't do anything, at least 
from my expertise, you use the foam pads to secure the SD card. If there's no securing the SD card as done in the official iFlash tutorial, that thing will pop out if dropped even a couple feet. Now that the iFlash is done, insert it. Take our backplate and battery, toggle the hold switch, peel off the adhesive from the battery. Take the battery, lift up that part of the flex. Go ahead and put the battery in. Make sure it's as close to the top as possible. Give it a nice push. Awesome. Take the front plate, reinsert the back plate. Take your eye flash, set it underneath that ridge on the mid frame. Take your back plate, insert the battery. Squeeze it. Now for the final test. Can't be perfect every time. Buttons. Scroll, perfect. A cold switch, perfect. Final headphone jack. All right, so this thing is done. That completes our tutorial. Going to go ahead and restore it. Send it off to the lucky customer. Thank you again. I hope you enjoyed.